Good morning. It is Saturday, July the 9th, 2022. Sarah and I are at Mount Rainier National Park. It is our first trip to this national park this climbing season, this hiking season overall. And uh, we're really excited to be back. It's definitely a place that feels like home to us. We had a choice to make on what to do this weekend because of uh, weather constraints and responsibilities. We either were going to choose to try and climb Mount Rainier itself and uh, stand on the summit, or uh, Little Tahoma Peak, the sub-peak of Mount Rainier. Uh, because this season for Sarah and I is kind of turning into uh, let's go back and finish off a lot of places we've tried in the past, but weren't really successful at, uh, under that criteria, we chose to go for the summit of Little Tahoma this weekend and give up the summit of Rainier. Uh, it, when choosing the route to attempt Little Tahoma, we've tried both ways in the past. We went from Paradise and we went from uh, Frying Pan Creek Summerland route both times last year. We did not have success. Um, a couple weeks ago there was a major heat wave. The snow still was not uh, consolidated well enough because there's a lot of it up here. And uh, on the Mount Rainier climbing blog, it showed a picture of the Paradise Route just under Anvil Rock, uh, the place where me and Sarah camped last year. Gigantic, uh, huge wet slab avalanche swept over that whole area and went all the way down the Cowlitz and. That narrowed that, uh, that route out for us. We didn't do that two weeks ago. And uh, so that leaves us here, Frying Pan Creek. It's a much shorter approach. We've already hiked most of the way up from the trailhead. Uh, and we've done the bushwhack through the willows, crossed over, and now we have just open snow slopes ahead of us. We're on the last push up to Meany Crest, we can start to look for a place set up camp. Definitely have some history on this route. I've tried it twice before. I've heard that the third time is a charm. Let's see if we can make it tomorrow morning. Here we go. This land of glacial moraines and snow fields. The head of Rainier poking up over there in the valley. And uh, we are heading up what is called the winter route up to Meany Crest. We have skirted around Summerland Meadows. And we're kind of going to follow the same path we went last year. We're going to follow and hug this moraine, rock crest up to where the snow breaks the ridge up there. And then Meany Crest is that knob of rock. And we'll start looking for our campsite. There is the famous Summerland Meadows. A lot more snow than last year. We were down there over 4th of July weekend and it was green wildflower meadows. And now there's barely some brown patches sticking out. Amazing. What a season, a difference in climate makes. And now this final steep snow slope. Up to the crest up there. We are aiming for that spot right there and that will allow us to jump on over to the final ridge to Meany Crest.
All right, we have crested over the top of Meany Crest. <laughs> and we have arrived at the campsite we were hoping to get. That nice rock shelter right over there. Camp is set. All that's left to do now is uh, chores of camp life. Melting water, making our beds, preparing food. I don't know if relaxing and taking a nap is considered a chore, but it's what I plan to do for sure. This will be the third time I've camped here at this rock shelter. I have to admit, looking at that down there, it's just a really scenic spot. Sometimes you're lucky enough to find running water. And we're not that lucky today, so we're trying other means of melting snow to conserve our fuel. And a lot of times just putting snow in your shovels, letting it sit in the sun, will melt at least a water bottle of liquid water for you. As you can see here, after letting the uh, snow sit in the sun, just for a tad, it does, you get plenty of liquid. Start filling your water bottles. A little bit at a time, and then it can be filtered. And uh, in the long run, this saves your, your gas. Was so refreshing. I took like a three hour nap. It was quiet mountain air. There's not a noise but the water and the wind. Oh, can't get enough of it. it looks like uh, cloud cover has moved in pretty thick and uh, whiteout conditions up there.
we're going to get up here and uh, change clothes, get ready for the evening, cook our dinner. Wow, this pretty nice cloud cover has moved in. The sun is like right there. You can see the clearing on the crest of the Cascades right there. But it has dropped in temperature. It's a lot colder. Definitely a lot foggier. Now looking up there towards the mountain. There's no views anymore. But it was pretty incredible earlier this morning. It is approaching uh, 8, 8.30 p.m. and we are getting ready for bed. It looks like the best sunset view we're going to get is this view here looking down the White River Valley. The clouds rolled in late afternoon and they never really went away. Our camp here just up behind me is around 7,500 feet and uh, the clouds have just been kind of kissing the tent at that altitude. Uh, all evening. I came down just a little bit from the tent and uh, it's actually pretty clear just down here, a matter of feet. Um, I'm hoping that when we wake up in the morning all of this dissipates or it goes down into the valleys and we have crystal clear skies above us. I know the clouds are not that thick. They are starting to break up. Up above me here I can see blue sky and over there there's gaps in the clouds and clear atmosphere above that. We have a 1 o'clock a.m. wake-up call. We're planning on getting out of camp as quickly as we can, climbing the frying pan glacier, taining Whitman Gap, passing through the gap, and then ascending the rest of the way up Whitman Glacier all the way to the summit. So I'm just going to use the clouds and the fact that they won't go away as a sign from nature it's time to get in the tent and not to worry about sunset because it's not going to be any and get a good night's sleep. See you in the morning. Putting the final touches on our climbing equipment, getting ready for roped glacier travel, and then we're going to set off. There's the summit right there. It's starting to get light.
here comes sunrise in that gorgeous Alpen glow. We are in it. It's getting brighter by the second. We're turning the corner now and heading up the final last steep section. Aiming for that snow goalie right up there. And then the rock scrambling to the summit begins. Here we are above a sea of clouds. We have just finished climbing the Whitman Glacier. It was definitely pretty steep, very sun cupped. And now we are poised and ready for the scramble portion of the climb. We are almost there. We just gotta go up this goalie here and then go to the climber's left, and that should put us on top of the summit ridge. <laughs> All right, we are safely through the first goalie. It was a little sketchy. Now we've got to cross these upper snow fields.
Summit of Little Tahoma, third highest summit in Washington State. All right, here we are in the summit of Little Tahoma Peak, 11,138 feet. The official third highest summit in Washington State and the last of the big mountains uh, in our state that we wanted to climb. Fantastic. <laughs> There's not a lot of room to stand up here. It drops pretty much straight down on either side of me. Pretty exhilarating. Sarah, you're on the summit of Little Tahoma. How do you feel? Heck yeah. This is awesome. Oh, you can see here how it falls straight down the north side of Little Tahoma to the Emmons Glacier below. There's Camp Sherman right there. There's the wide expanse of the biggest glacier in the lower 48 states. There's Sarah signing the summit register. Signing the back of the summit register because it's so full. Well, Sarah signs the summit register. I'm going to do a couple panning shots. This is the way we came up right here. We walked along these rocks. Uh, our camp is down there somewhere. There's Whitman Crest. The Whitman Gr Glacier center frame there. Looking right down the Ingram Glacier, which where me and Sarah were standing last year. We were right there along that ridge. There's the Tatouche Range down there below us. Camp Muir. Right down here, that's the, that's the spine of Little Tahoma that cleaves the Ingram and the Emmons. There's Columbia Crest, Gibraltar Rock, Disappointment Cleaver. Over here is Russell Cliffs, the giant expanse of the Emmons. And it comes down this way. The summit kind of blocks my view from that side. You can see Ingram Flats Camp right there above that ice fall. Definitely looks like a cloudy day for all the residents of the Puget Sound region. And we are up here above a sea of clouds.
right, our time on the summit is over, and we are descending. The climb is only half over, though, and the most dangerous part begins. Here's a much better view of the wide expanse of the Emmons Glacier. We have just passed through Whitman Gap. We've taken off a bunch of our equipment and we are going to drop onto the smooth and filled in frying pan glacier. We're opting to go about it unroped. It is well into the afternoon. It is getting hot out. Our camp is all packed up. And we are ready to hit the trail. Head back down the Frying Pan Creek drainage to the trailhead. It was a very airy summit. Uh, I hauled my tripod up there hoping to get some still shots. There was no room for any of that. Literally, Little Tahoma, it just drops straight off on the north side for sure, ledges down the south side. We are so excited and so happy that we made it. We've been dreaming about making that summit for quite a while now, and I'm glad we finally got to make it a reality. Uh, it's just like, it's like you're on the bow of the Titanic up there, over the ship, looking over the ocean, except this ocean is nothing but glacial ice. We could see all the climbers on the Emmons Glacier, on the DC, going up Ingram Direct, very busy climbing routes today for sure. The descent was pretty uneventful. Uh, we climbed back down pretty much the way we came. The snow turned to crap, very soft, very slushy, very quickly. Uh, there were some crevasses opening up and we set pickets for running belays pretty much the whole way down the Whitman Glacier, which is pretty steep at the very top of its head wall. I'd say close to 45 degrees. Once we got down off of the steeper section of the Whitman, pretty straightforward all the way back. You know, just sitting here at this camp or even up there closer to the mountain, it's very exciting to listen to the sounds coming off of Mount Rainier. Tons of avalanches, ice falls, rock falls, rumbling every few minutes as the sun warmed up. It was frozen this morning though. The freezing level dropped for sure overnight. It was very icy on the, on the ascent going up, uh, and I think it stayed cold up on top. It, was, uh, it wasn't windy at all either. I was expecting it to be a little bit windy. I've never had a, uh, a more calm summit experience before. I mean, it was a little breezy, but it wasn't ripping at all. Fantastic views just all around. Uh, probably the highlight of the summer thus far. One last look. Beautiful Summerland Meadows. Trying to find our way back down to the trail right now. We're going down a different way than we came up yesterday.